Hi friends, so far we have completed six videos in the hydraulic excavator that is the evolution, hydraulics basics, critical components, main pump, hydraulic motors, hydraulic circuit. Now in the seventh video I am going to explain about the swing device which is used to revolve the superstructure of the machine. This is the hydraulic excavator. The component which is shown here is called the swing device. Depending upon the size of the excavator, the swing device may be one or two. All the construction machines, what we are seeing in the roofs and the canals and the small construction machines that up to the weight of around 45 to 50 tons will be having only one swing device. The higher capacity machines, particularly the machines working with the mining will be having two swing devices. These components are the travel devices, which we'll be discuss discussing in the coming videos. As discussed, the hydraulic excavator is divided into two parts mainly. The upper structure, which contains the frame, which houses or holds the engine, pumps, motor, uh, holes, the engine, pump, the control walls and pipes, boom, cylinders, stick and it's a cylinder, then the bucket and also the cabin, which is mounted over the lower structure. This is the lower structure. The lower structure bears the complete weight of the machine and having the components like the track chains and the travel device. This is the travel device, which are useful for the movement of the machine to and fro and in case of taking any, in case of negotiating any turn. So the purpose of the swing device is during the loading of the bucket and moving the bucket from loading phase to the dumping machine that is dumper, this upper part has to rotate clockwise and anti-clockwise over the lower structure. If it is not rotated, if it is not movable, if it is fixed rigidly, the entire mission has to always or frequently move forward and reverse and also take turning left and right during the picking the material in the bucket from the face and also unloading on the dumper in a confined area, which is not only time consuming, but practically impossible in a confined area in a work spot. So to facilitate that function smoothly, a mechanism has provided to rotate the superstructure alone over the lower structure. That mechanism which facilitates to rotate the superstructure over the lower structure is called the swing device. The swing device looks like this. Why it is called the device? It is having mainly two components. The one is, this one is the hydraulic motor. This is the hydraulic motor, which is a simple fixed displacement axial piston motor which we discussed in the previous videos. This hydraulic motor which gives input drive to the bottom component which is called the swing gearbox. The swing gearbox is a double reduction planetary gearbox. The what we are seeing is the planetary gearbox here. The planetary gearbox is having mainly three components that is the sun gear, the planetary gears which are mounted over a single planetary case, this unit, and all these planetary gears revolve inside the ring gear. Sun, planetary gears over the planetary case and the ring gear. Okay. Here in this mechanism, the planetary gear will be an input device. As per the formula of the planetary gears we discussed earlier, out of these three components, that is sun, planetary and ring, one will be input, one will be locked, and one will become automatically output. In this case, sun will be the input device because this sun gear is connected to the hydraulic motor output shaft. Then 
this ring is a locking device because this is bolted to the machine superstructure so it will not rotate because this is bolted and this ring gear is bolted to this housing so it then the third component will be the planetary device which will become the output the cut section of this swing device looks like this this is the motor hydraulic motor pistons this plunger barrels etc this is the first reduction planetary and this is the second reduction planetary these are the bearings and you can see some seals also inside to prevent the leakages of the oil the bearings are provided for the friction reduction between the moving components before going uh, to look into the uh, detailed view of the planetary gears let us just have a quick look about the functioning of the planetary gears this is already explained in the video serial number 13 detailed about the seven function seven uh, formulas of the planetary gears now let us focus on the formula which is adopted here the sun gear the planetary and this is the ring gear sun gear is an input ring is locked as i told you then the rpm is dropped from here to here because it is locked it is zero then the output rpm is dropped and where is the direction of the rotation of the input and as as put is the same so assume this sun gear is having 30 teeth and the planetary gears together are having 90 teeth and the ring gear is having 60 teeth and as per this formula sun will be the output ring is the lock because it is bolted to the frame and automatically planetary will become the output here you see the planetary reduction will be like that output that is number of teeth on the planetary will be divided by the input 30 which will be 90 divided by 30 that is 3 is to 1 is the ratio here what is the result the output speed is less than the input speed which is nothing but increase in the torque as per the formula of the simple machines whenever the speed is decreased the torque is increased the direction of rotation of both input and output are the same this is the formula adopted in designing the swing planetary gear section see this exploded view here as i told you this will be a double reduction planetary gear box the purpose of providing double reduction is to get the maximum torque in a confined space to get the maximum torque in the confined space from here this is the hydraulic motor which gives the drive which gets the drive through the hydraulic fluid when it is rotated its output shaft is connected to a gear wheel which will be a sun gear this one to the first planetary so when the motor rotates the sun gear rotates when the sun gear rotates as this ring is locked or bolted this planetary gears rotates in the same in the complete case in the same direction okay so here one reduction has taken place and the first planetary section this planetary gaze this planetary case output device again it is connected to a sun gear which acts as input here this one is meshed here which acts as input to the second planetary section again ring is locked the second planetary case will become output so second planetary has become output the second planetary output is connected to a pinion this is the pinion again this pinion is meshed with a large ring gear which will so this is the that is the output of the second planetary unit here already two reductions have taken place first planetary reduction and second planetary reduction again from here to here one more reduction is taking place because the number of teeth on the ring gear is much higher compared to the number of teeth on the pinion 
So the total reduction will be the product or multiplication of these three places. Multiplication of the ratio of the first planet reduction, second planet reduction and the ratio between the pinion and the ring gear. For example, if the first planet reduction is 3, second planet reduction is 3 is to 1 and this reduction will be approximately 9 is to 1. The total reduction will be from the motor output to the pinion to the superstructure rotation will be 3 into 3 into 12. That is 9 into 12. That is 108 is to 1. So for every 108 revolutions of this hydraulic motor, the superstructure will rotate one revolution. The excavator are designed to revolve its swing, its superstructure maximum 6 to 7 revolutions per minute. So the speed of that one is under the control of the operator. If you want at one revolution or two revolutions, three revolutions, it is on the control of the operator through joysticks. The flow is increased, the speed will increase, the flow is decreased, the flow will be decreased. So the ratios what I explained you, what I told you are only assumptions. So this inner circle ring gear looks like this. This is firmly mounted to the lower frame or lower structure of the machine with the heavy duty bolts. And here it is meshed with this. As the lower structure will not firmly mounted on the ground and this gear is firmly bolted to the lower structure, when the power comes here to this pinion, only superstructure is rotated but not the lower structure. When this is mounted to the lower structure, the bearing between the pinion and the superstructure this is a big ball bearing. This bearing case is bolted to the upper structure or the superstructure. So bearing case is mounted to the upper structure, the gear is mounted to the lower structure. Okay. The entire weight of the superstructure lies on these bearings. So lubrication of this bearing is essential. Lubrication of this teeth and this pinion are essential. Lubrication of this all moving components inside the gearbox are essential. To lubricate this bearing as well as this gear and this pinion, generally extreme pressure grease is used which is to be replaced at specified intervals. And the lubrication for this gear box will be recommended grade of oil normally will be 90 grade or 120 grade depending upon the manufacturer's recommendation which is to be checked frequent at regular intervals and to be replaced at regular intervals specified intervals. This is about the swing device of the hydraulic excavator. Go through this four pages notes in case you have any queries you can always contact me through the email.